Hey guys, good afternoon. It's around lunchtime here on a Monday. The house went into pro forma session, which is just sort of a paperwork kind of thing. The Senate, however, is going to go into session a little bit later today. There is a protest uh, about the veterans thing somewhere, somewhere over here. And apparently a lot of senators and congressmen are coming out for the photo ops. Uh, I think John Stewart's still around. We'll take a look at them. Then we'll probably grab a bike and make our way, well, make our way somewhere more fun down onto the mall or something. Just check out what's going on. So the protesters were on the Senate steps yesterday, but apparently they got pushed by security off to the side. They have some sort of rules about doing press conferences on the Senate steps. So now they're under a big tree, which, <laughs> Truth be told, is probably in their best interest. It's hot. It's in the high 80s, 90 degrees. So there's no flag at the Senate right now. That means they're not in session yet. They should be in session shortly. And then the August recess is coming up momentarily. All right, let's uh, wander over and see who we see. Who? Bill Barr. Oh, Mark. Oh, yeah. John Stewart is. Somewhere, right? Somewhere. I saw him. I took a phone call and started walking around in this lawn, and I lost track of him all about here. I promise you, you got a better piece of kit than I did. <laughs> we can go for. Who's he yelling at? No idea. Let's go. You're not a good person. And I don't need to tell this people that lie about veterans' health care. Why don't you tell her? Why don't you tell her that this is So you tell him! Tell him! That is bullshit! That is a $400 million dollar! Everybody get over here right now! You tell him! Everybody that is here, get over here right now! You're a troll and a piece of shit! And you're delaying this! You're delaying I didn't lie about shit! You don't have to talk to the senator to know how the budget works. Why is John? I'm, I'm not even against you guys. Then why the then fuck are you doing? Then what are you posting? You are lying! You are lying! All you do is name call. You name call and you insist. You haven't been working on this thing for years. All you do is call names. Because I was serving in the military, John. I served. I served. I served. So did he! He was a Why are you saying Where have you been burning? John, what do you need to the fuck out of here, asshole? To provide evidence. Absolutely. I've been trying to meet with him all the time. He called the police on us. We went up there and he called the police on us. We went to his office. We went to his office. These people have already counted to 15 years. Do you think we can do it? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just screaming. Here, let me explain it to you. Explain it. The House. Do you want to meet the president? Shut the fuck up. Listen. The House put the pack. We already went there. He said no. He does not want to meet with us. He does not want to meet with us. He does not want to meet with us. Let's do it. 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 
you're will not you listen to me? You don't want to yeah. listen. But when he you're does, he said yes. Let's actor. get it done. Okay. Okay. You're not he said a good yes. faith actor. When? He said yes. When? Of course. Today. Right now. All right. Let's do it now. When will the meeting be? I, I'm. I just got yes from one side. I will go back to the other side and I will call We're John. Okay. We're right here. Take, will you shake my hand, John? You're not even an arbitrator. You're some guy. John is negotiating on the bill. We talked to the people. Yeah. I won't even be in the room. Why don't you, That's why fine. Why you talk to the families? But I'll set no, it no, up. No, no, no. Why are you only talking to John? Because I'm with, I'm with the families. No, you're fucking not. They're right here. They're right here. He's dead. John, what do you mean? He's dead. If you're with the families, you support me. He, he was just talking to me, and then these people came in. These people, these people are veterans of this these country. These veterans, no, these people are your constituents. You didn't say that. He came here to start trouble. Hey, Rosie. No. I do human events, Dan. Sir. Okay. If he doesn't want to talk to you, if he doesn't want to favor, yeah, let's go. He doesn't have to. We were talking, but we got you know separated. If he wants to call, guys, come on. If he wants to come on, let's go over here. Back to where you're talking. Hey guys, well, <laughs> that's an early way to start your morning. I was just out there to cover the uh, veterans protest and then a conservative uh, commentator, uh, Jack, I don't know, isn't full name, Prosbiak or something like that? He came out and engaged Jon Stewart in a bit of verbal tete-a-tete. Um, they have separated and calmed down. The police got involved. It's all mellow now. Let's, uh, let's just head over to Union Station and grab a bike and we'll go down, check out the mall, check out the White House. So this is where our bike ride ended yesterday, and this is where our bike ride is going to start today, Union Station. We uh, will make our way across town. That building over there, I think, has just reopened. That's the U.S. Postal Museum. It's actually owned by the Smithsonian, technically. And that has all the stamps, you know, the upside-down airplane stamp and the, all the other fancy stamps from history are in there. It's actually one of the most valuable collections in the Smithsonian. Some of those stamps are worth literally millions of dollars each. Hmm. Oh. Back in Union Station. It's actually a little bit more busy than yesterday. Yesterday was pretty quiet. Now, a lot of you have been asking, where are the immigrants that are being bussed up from Texas and Arizona? And apparently, this is where they're being dropped off. I don't see any big groups of people right now, though, looking confused like they just got off a bus from Texas. But, well, we'll keep our eyes out. Try to show you that if we can see it. You know what? Maybe, maybe we should go down to the National Guard Armory. A lot of you have been asking about the call out of the National Guard, which I don't think has been approved yet. But we can ride our bike over to the National Guard and see what's up. And into the park we go. Lincoln Park. Named after Abraham Lincoln, as you can probably imagine. And as I showed you before, this statue is the subject of some controversy. There are people who believe it should be torn down. People believe it should be recast or put up in a different light. They don't feel that... Uh, Lincoln lifting up the slaves, as is portrayed in this picture, is historically accurate or slightly offensive. Um, they're kind of in a detente right now. They're kind of studying the issue. They haven't really come up with any official guidance on what they're going to do next. But it is something that's out there. Now, down on this side is Mary McLeod Bethune who uh, Bethune-Cookman University you may have heard of down in Florida. That's named after her. She just had a statue put of her, of her in the U.S. Capitol in Statuary Har. Oh, there's even some flowers out here. Yeah, she uh, was an educator and civil rights pioneer, and she's honored also in Lincoln Park and now in the U.S. Capitol. 
All right, let's keep going down to the guard headquarters, the armory as they call it. And this building over here is known as the car barn. It's now luxury condominiums and apartments. But at one time, this was the streetcar maintenance facility down here on the eastern side of town. I've shown you another car barn in Georgetown. They also worked on streetcars on that side of town. But uh, this old car barn is now condos down on, well, the RFK area. This massive building that you see here is Eastern High School. It is the public high school for this area, uh, mostly Capitol Hill. It has a world-renowned uh, choir, Eastern High School Choir, also has some good athletic programs. And it has some of the same blight and urban problems of the general neighborhood as do all public high schools in big cities. Honestly, there's not much going on here at the National Guard after those guys paint the new lines. It's really quiet. Whew. So, over here on my right is DC National Guard headquarters. And frankly, guys, it's quiet. It is very quiet. Entrance. One Humvee. <laughs> DC does have a medevac uh, helicopter capability, but it's actually, I think they're based out in West Virginia. They don't have the helicopters in DC. And this is the armory. The idea is that this is where they're going to start processing uh, those coming up from Texas and Arizona to help get them to where they want to be next instead of just dumping them off at Union Station and they will bring them down here. I don't think that's put in place yet. DC does have an Air National Guard. You see the F-16 fighter jet right there. The DC Air National Guard is based out at uh, Andrews Air Force Base. It was DC Air National Guard fighters that were the first fighters up over Washington DC on September 11th. They took off even though they were unarmed. Yeah. Uh, Two pilots, one was a female actually, one was a male, and uh, they were flying towards the Pentagon to put up a patrol. And the lead pilot turned to his wingman and said, I'll take the nose. And she said, I'll take the tail. Their plan, if they got close enough to the jet, was that they were going to ram them. Those two F 16 pilots went up without ammunition but were ready to take down any aircraft that came into the district airspace on 9-11. As you guys know, United Flight 93 never made it to the district. It went down in Pennsylvania. And eventually those F-16s were replaced by fully armed jets out of Langley, which is the nearest like fighter jet base to DC down in Virginia. Pretty crazy story. All right, guys, nothing is going on here at the National Guard Armory. I think nothing is appropriately with the word. There's pretty much not much. Now, now we got to make our way all the way back down to the White House, which is about four or five miles from here. Yeah, it's quite up. Hey, you know what else is down here, though? You guys always ask me. They're like, Penguin 6, can we see the jail? Can we see the jail? I was like, okay, let's go down to the jail for DC where they hold all the uh, all the rank and file criminals but they also have a lot of the January 6 defendants uh, incarcerated down here at the DC jail and that's just right over here hey there it is so that guys that is the DC jail yeah all those buildings back there that's the DC jail where uh, the cops take people after they get arrested from a station, and that's where the January 6th people are being held, somewhere in this jail. The jail is not a nice place. It is a pretty beat-up jail. I think the Justice Department has sued the D.C. government uh, several times about the conditions inside this jail. It's, it's kind of a mess. But it's, uh, I guess they have air conditioning because all the windows are closed. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, let's make our way down this way and make our way back to Capitol Hill, yeah? You know, I just realized something. We're at 17th and E as in Edward. 
And well, there's something just up here at 17th and C, Charlie. Let's go take a look at it. And I think some of you, some of you guys with the eagle eyes, you may recognize it. 17th and C. Ah, here it is. This little park. This little park at 17th and C Street. Hmm. Does the park look familiar yet? No. But maybe the houses on the other side of the street look familiar. They're all kind of nondescript, DC style townhouses. So, what's so special about these nondescript houses? Well, for those of you with an eagle eye and who have seen the movie Minority Report with Tom Cruise, the uh, rather exhilarating opening scene where a wife is basically uh, cheating on her husband takes place right over there in one of the townhouses. And the husband comes out here into the park where he plots to kill his wife and her lover. And then at the last minute, Tom Cruise comes falling from the sky with his pre-crime police officers and makes an arrest. Well, folks, that took place right here, 17th and C. So if you guys watch Minority Report, you just have to watch the first five or 10 minutes. That's where that took place, right here on Capitol Hill. All right, let's go back up to the Capitol and see what's going on. Oh, they reopened this road. I didn't show you guys this. So uh, this is Second Street behind the Supreme Court, and it has been reopened for the first time since, well, the Roe versus Wade Dobbs decision. They uh, had that blocked off. They still have the fences out here, but now that the roads are open, maybe the fences can come down soon too. That would be a nice change. So you remember that big thing about bricks on Capitol Hill? Yeah, and I told you it was to redo the road. Well, let's take a look at the road, yeah? It looks like it's all done. So this alley has been re-bricked pretty much all the way back up here now. There's a garbage truck coming. Yeah, they went, this was, this was never bricked to begin with. This was just like, uh, back here, I think it was just dirt. But now, the whole thing is bricks all the way to the end. Looks pretty nice, yeah? Anyway, a lot of you guys were asking, what are those bricks for on Capitol Hill? Well, we're riding on them right now. And we're docked. So, I need to go to the other side of the river now. I need to go down to Anacostia, which is over here. We're at the U.S. Capitol, yeah? Up here, but I need to cross the Anacostia now. My son is doing some public service at Martha's Table, which is a, a shelter f food organization so people can have enough food to eat. And I need to go pick him up. But let me take you over to Anacostia. We have to drive there. And let me show you a couple cool things that are over there. So this is Anacostia Park. And this park is just underneath uh, the freeway. And down over here is the Eagle's Nest. And if you look over there, that's the U.S. Park Police Eagle, the helicopter that the, we see flying over all the presidential motorcades and helicopter operations. That's their base. If you come down here, you can see it take off a lot. Uh, let's drive around. So let's get off the beaten path here because there's something pretty cool back here. Yeah. Let's go and see if we can find it, if it's still even open. I don't know if it's still even open. So you see the road is closed up ahead. That is the former location of what was known as Berry Farms. Berry Farms was a public housing project that was, well, let's put it this way, the police knew where Berry Farms was, yeah? The police were there a lot. But back behind, can I even get back there? Can I get back there? Let's, let's see. Yeah, back behind the Berry Farms Recreation Center is this basketball court. And these basketball court 
is where some of the best basketball in all of DC takes place. Let's go take a look. Berry Farms used to exist up there and I think there was a murder a month and a shooting a week. I was just kind of crazy at times. But on the weekend, this is where it was at. This is where it's still at in DC. This basketball court is the home of the Goodman League. The Goodman League is a street basketball played here in DC. And the talent level is next level. <laughs> they even got the sign, next level. The Goodman League, it's sponsored by Nike now. But you come out here, uh, you used to come out here, and you would see guys like Kevin Durant, Gilbert Arenas, Michael Beasley, John Wall, uh, Brendan Jennings. You would see all these NBA players spend their summers playing hoops on the streets here with the Goodman League. This is where basketball was in D.C. and still is. If you want to see some good basketball, come down here on the night, summer night, and this is where it's at. Now, as you make your way up, uh, up Martin Luther King, you come up to this old government facility, which is now becoming a new government facility. You see all the bricks on my right? Well, this on my right and on my left is the former campus of St. Elizabeth's Hospital. St. Elizabeth's Hospital was basically the mental hospital for DC. Uh, this is the place that John Hinckley, the guy who tried to kill Ronald Reagan, well, he spent his time at St. Elizabeth's Mental Hospital. Now, it's Homeland Security Headquarters. Yep, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, has taken over the campus of a former insane asylum and is making that their new headquarters. So off to my right now is the Coast Guard headquarters. DHS is building several buildings. And over here on the left, you can see several of these really beautiful, beautiful old buildings uh, going into being renovated. Now some of them, some of them are beyond help. Uh, they're just so beat up. But uh, some of them, I think they're gonna be able to salvage and put in some new facilities in those old buildings so this is the old campus of st elizabeth's mental institution <clears throat> like i said some really beautiful buildings now i think they just built a new sports arena back here let's go back and see what we can see Now, they were trying to see if a university wanted... Yeah, that's the entertainment center back there. They were trying to see if a university wanted to buy the property and turn it into a campus or something, but uh, there were no takers. Some of these buildings, well, they, they're probably beyond repair. But some of them are... They're all architecturally historic, so not much that can be done. They can't be torn down, for example. They could fall down. <laughs> All right, another speed bump. And up on my right is the National Historic Site. This location right up here is or was the home of Frederick Douglass, the famous abolitionist. This is the Frederick Douglass home. Now, apparently, he had a lot of different locations in DC. But I think this was like his last location or his most, uh, he spent the most time here. And Frederick Douglass was a well-known writer during the era of the Civil War and the abolitionist movement, a f slave who taught himself how to read, write, and all that, and became a prominent voice against slavery. And this, this house is dedicated to his memory and his life. But it's under renovation right now, so we can't go in. Let's go around the front and see what we can see. Other camera just died, of course. But uh, there you go, guys. That is the Frederick Douglass house. Let me see if I pull over right in front. And when this reopens, I'll bring you guys down here. You can see they've got a fence around it right now. They're doing renovations and stuff. But uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's swing back this way and go to where we need to go.
So guys, uh, pretty crazy day. Yeah, pretty crazy morning. Uh, I did mention in the video and that uh, John Stewart and Jack, I can't pronounce his name. Even today, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, the two of them did meet and agree that they are fighting for the same thing. Uh, they apologize for getting a little bit out of control. But anyway, uh, that's on the Twitter feed. You can find that link. I'll put it in the description. Also, uh, Joe Biden is having a special announcement tonight at the White House from the balcony. I'll see if I can get out there. I've got to drop my kid off for tennis, so I'm not sure. Hope you enjoyed that little run around DC. We'll do it again tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.